How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Tuesday on this program. You know what that means? We got Raw to talk about here. This is the go-home show, by the way. There is a pay-per-view coming up on a Sunday. So we're going to give you the lineup for that. Plus, NXT Spring Break-In tonight. We've also got AEW tomorrow. And in addition to tomorrow, it looks like AEW's got a new series in the works for TBS. And we're going to tell you about that and uh, what appears to be going on here. We've also got all of the news on Stu Grayson leaving AEW. Roderick Strong wanting to leave WWE, but not being allowed to. New Japan notes, Capital Collision is coming up. We're going to try and get some guests on from that show here over the next week or so. Rampage and SmackDown. Have we told you about the NBA playoffs? These shows got massacred. All-time low, 18-49 to 49 demo numbers for both shows. SmackDown. SmackDown did what uh, Dynamite usually does on a Wednesday on cable. And uh, Rampage did what NXT has been doing on the USA Network. So these were not good numbers at all, but that's what's going to happen until the NBA playoffs have ended. So we'll tell you about all of that today and uh, plenty more. If you'd like to text us here, we're going to start with text messages. Maybe if we have time, we'll open up the phone lines later. But the text message line, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. My email, brian at wrestlingobserver.com. And, of course, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And if you head up to Twitter, you can find out something interesting that we'll talk about here in a little while. Sticky to the top of my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. We'll talk about it in a moment. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Before we get into anything today, I I just got to get something off my chest. I'm not going to get mad. And I'm not only going to complain. But I want to make a point because it was something that someone brought up to me this weekend as well. But <laughs> bros, okay, there has been crowd sweetening in WWE for at least the last 35 years, okay? From the moment I started watching wrestling, they did crowd sweetening. I know you're not new, okay? Now, I think that there are some people who believe that they only did crowd sweetening on taped shows. I'm here to tell you, they've done crowd sweetening on tape shows. They have done crowd sweetening on live shows. I have no earthly idea why this is suddenly a story, but I have an idea. I don't think that the issue is that we got like a lot of new people that don't know what's going on, because I think a lot of these people have been watching for a while. But what I do think has happened is we had a global pandemic, and for a long time we had a Thunderdome. And I think that because we had the Thunderdome and we had so much fake cheering for so long, I think some people's ears got acclimated to this fake noise, and now they notice it more, okay? Now, obviously... There was not a lot of crowd sweetening during the 90s. Why? Because you didn't have to. Because the crowds were actually going crazy all the time. Okay? But there have been times where the crowds have not been as hot, and they have done crowd sweetening on tape shows and live shows. It's not new. Okay? Now, what I want to... The other reason I wanted to bring this up, because I was so irritated today, because Dave made a comment last night on Observer Radio that... Edge got the most heat of any heel on the show. And, like, our board exploded. Dave! God! It's clearly... They're, they pipe in! Bro, I know, okay? Bro, forget your ears. Use your eyes. If you watch the segment... I even had the exact timestamp here. Edge goes opposite the hard camera. He does a bunch of cheap heat. And they all stand up and they go... Listen! I know! The fake heat, it's irrelevant, okay? If you can find another heel on the show last night that got more heat than Edge, then Dave is wrong. 
but you're not going to find one. I know it was cheap heat. I said that last night, okay? But whether there's crowd noise or not, that's irrelevant to the point, okay? I know there's fake noise piped in. The guy still got the most heat of any heel on the show. I don't know why this was like pages of anger today over this, okay? Now, I was talking to somebody this weekend. They made a good point. They said, you remember like a couple of years ago, and I do remember this because I was there. There was WrestleMania. It was Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, and the fans turned on the match, and they're like throwing, uh, you know, the balls and everything all over the place. And they're just turning on it. Remember all those years they turned on Roman Reigns and WWE wanted him cheered, but he was getting booed? He goes, did you watch the Raw after WrestleMania? It was just there. And they're pointing out that, like, look at all this stuff that you see, you know, the last year or so, a couple years since fans came back. And where are these fans revolting? Like, bro, we had fans singing Seth Rollins' song on the show. I mean, I'm sure you can tell me that's that's crowd sweetening too, right? But anyway, they were singing uh, Seth Rollins' sh- uh, song on the show last night. And they do this stupid stuff, and this audience is just going along with everything. Who on this show, on Raw or SmackDown, I'm asking everybody here, who is the audience not accepting right now? Obviously, they would like Becky Lynch to be a babyface, but they're booing her. Who Who is the audience revolting against right now? And the point of this was, this person's feeling was, all these fans that used to revolt against WWE during the pandemic, they did that because they wanted to watch wrestling and they wanted to go to wrestling, and that was all they had. Well, now that there's an AEW, their belief is that, well, now they've got their alternative and they're watching AEW. All those fans are revolting against Roman and beach balls and WWE. They don't even go to WWE events anymore. So the audience you've got now is actually like a very, you know, oh, you want me to cheer that guy? I'll cheer him. Oh, you want me to boo? I'll boo him. And they just go along with everything. And sometimes they're quiet. And so there's crowd sweeting on live shows. And on tape shows. But the last thing I'd like to mention here, because I think this is what I don't, I don't know if people get this or not. You know why this is called crowd sweetening? Okay. Do you know what sweetening? You know the word, you know what the derivative of the term sweetening? Okay. Mike, choose something very spicy. Okay. What? Thai food? Like, sure. imagine you go to the Thai restaurant yeah. yes. and you order, uh, uh, I, they go one, one through five on spicy and you go five. The thing with the peanuts? Yeah, you go five. Absolutely. You go five. And because yeah. uh, you're confused and you think five is the least spicy, but actually five is the most spicy. Uh. And so you take the food home and you you take a bite of the five and like b- blood comes out your ears and your hair lights on fire. Like, oh, God, I screwed up. So then, you know, you know, one of your kids goes, oh, just put some sugar on it. Just sweeten it up. So, of course, you sprinkle sugar. On- Bro, there ain't no amount of sweetening that you can add to that number five from the Thai place that is going to make it not spicy, okay? So the point of this is, bro, this crowd sweening, they're adding a little something. It's not magic. If it was magic, they wouldn't have had to worry about Roman Reigns getting booed for six straight years. They would have just turned that little knob, and you wouldn't have heard the booing. You would have only heard cheering, and they would have manipulated everything. But they can't because it's sweetening. So, yes, they turn that little knob up here. They turn that little knob down there. But, bro, it's not like we're watching a New Japan show and nobody's allowed to cheer and boo and they're just turning this knob up. You can see sometimes the people going like this and like that. Am I, like, on another planet? What's happening here? By chance, did you get any feedback about the fact that they didn't do a whole lot of sweetening during Mustafa Ali in his intro and his... Back and forth with the Miz in there? No, I am not on another planet, DJ. Yes, they turned down the booze. You could still hear them. I'll take that as no. You could still hear them, even though they turned them down. Who cares? God, why is this a thing? That's my issue. Why is this a thing? Who cares? I, I, they've been doing it since 1985. I have never cared, and people have made me care, and now I'm angry about it. Like, I don't care, and I don't know why you people care. Well, it, it, they are making it more obvious. There have been times where, you know, everybody knows there's 3,500 people there because they can tell that, and then they 
they are not blending very well. That's been a complaint about AEW that WWE production people have poked fun at. They're blending when it comes to that sort of thing, although WWE has not been great with it either at times. You all right? No, I just I don't get why everyone's so mad. No. They can't get the reactions they want. Dude, they never have. In 1991, when Hulk Hogan pulled Sid out of the Royal Rumble, they booed that guy so bad that I mm-hmm. bought the Coliseum video, and they literally had done everything in their power to, to, to pipe in cheers when Hulk Hogan pulled Sid. Like, bro, it's been happening forever. And actually, it used to be worse. It used you know, to be they, so much worse. Have you guys forgotten that Roman Reigns? Six years of my life I sat through them getting the wrong reactions for that guy. And then, before that, it was John Cena. They've been getting the wrong reactions forever. Forever. I just don't get why it's a story now. It's actually less bad now than it was before the pandemic. Right? Forever, ever. Forever, ever. Diesel! This guy's pointing out before that it was Diesel. God, you can go back forever. They've always got the wrong reactions. <laughs> like, I gotta go to a break. I'm gonna start the show over after the break. I'm starting the whole show over. Dom, get the music ready to start the show over. Back in a moment, Observer Live. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live! We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday 3 Pacific 6 Eastern. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, Figure 4 Daily, Filthy 4 Daily with Tom Lawler. Brian Avidi Show, three-time, three-time, three-time Wrestling Observer Book of the Year Award winner, Texarkana Television Champion, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt First Degree. Did I miss anything, Mike? Worst non-wrestler in the filthies last year. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Damn it, we're starting this show over again. We got a lot to get into here today. We do. You know what today is? What's that? It's Tuesday on this show. It is. I'm so tempted to just run right in NXT 2.0, but I'm not gonna. No. Trying to turn this thing around. Exactly. It appears a new behind-the-scenes AEW series is in the works at TBS. Ringleaders, a survey platform that was launched by Warner Media in 2019, has sent out a survey asking for fans' help in naming a new AEW show that is coming to TBS. Every episode of the show will, quote, track our core cast on the road at AEW events as they try to hold on to the titles they have or win back the ones they've lost, with everything culminating in the biggest pay-per-view event of the year. I thought this was fake the first time I read it. No. I honest to God. Here are the potential names. AEW Friends and Enemies. AEW Fight <laughs> to the Finish. AW to the mat, AW to the top, AW road to the belt, AW breakout. <laughs> How many breakouts, break ins, breakout tournaments do we need in this business? AW grit and glory, AW all access, AW the climb, AW on the ropes, and AW uprise. I can't I believe so- they didn't come up with the obvious AW backstage. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think all access is is sounding really good for what the concept of that thing uh, actually is, and maybe they just have a bunch of stuff that's out there to you know kind of whittle some things down. I can't believe that they're serious about some of those things, but I guess it depends on what you can trademark as well. TNT's Road to the Top previously provided a behind the scenes look at AEW. Show had been picked up for a second season, but Cody and Brandy departed. Hmm. So I don't think we're going to get that second season. So instead, we're going to get AEW to the mat. Maybe they could call it to the back. AEW Silk Stalkings. No, that would be Impact to the back. If they didn't do it, nobody can. No, we get Mike Tanay in to just do the voiceover. (laughs) AEW to the back. back. (laughs) Or we get that one uh, lady on NXT. You can call it uh, AEW Vic Wade. Whatever it is, they need to have Excalibur say it so it can say it really quickly. Also got the update on Stu Grayson. He has departed AEW. His contract expired. They were unable to come to a money figure on a new deal. Of course, he was part of the Dark Order. So we'll see what his future holds. And uh, Roderick Strong has uh, several requests to be released from his contract. And uh, they're not letting him go. Hmm. I wonder why. I wonder why. Well, you know it's what funny happens? who they uh, they decide to let go and who they don't, yeah. because 
I mean, yeah, I've, I've mentioned this before that, uh, you know, Vince, he always, he always goes through these phases where he wants 6'2", 225, no indie guys, no wrestlers. We'll train him from scratch, blah, 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 blah. And it's like a, it's like a circle. It's kind of like this uh, crowd sweetening circle of life. It's, it's just what's old is new again for some yeah. reason. Life runs in a loop. This guy, is, he's going to go back to wrestlers one of these days because he's going to get really mad that nobody can work. Because as much as Vince wants it to not be wrestling and not use the word wrestling and no belts or other wrestling were, at the end of the day, he doesn't want to see bad wrestling on his show. So anyway, this is going to go in a circle. And I do notice that, like, people want their release. And, uh, you know, he doesn't want to give certain people their release. But he also doesn't want to use them. Like, he's not calling Roderick Strong up to the main roster. I mean... He iced Ali, and I think part of it is because, you know, there there's there is the Vince McMahon, who I'm sure recognizes that Ali and Roderick Strong and I'm sure Adam Cole he recognizes they're great wrestlers, but to him it's like you can be a great wrestler, but are you marketable and can you be a WrestleMania main eventer? And if the answer is no, then it's like. Well, I don't want to let you go because you could probably go be a great wrestler for somebody else, but you ain't going to be a great wrestler for me because you couldn't headline a WrestleMania. So I think that's the the issue here. And obviously, they don't, he doesn't want him going to AEW and just fully reforming Undisputed and uh, and doing does he what care? they refuse to do on the main roster. I don't know if he really cares about that that much. I'm sure he you cares to I mean? a degree. The idea Maybe that degree. he has Others these will. guys... Like, you, you, if you don't, if you think he doesn't care at all that he had Adam Cole in developmental for two years, and Adam Cole left his developmental and became a star for the other guys, like, if you think it doesn't bother him, I mean, he probably doesn't lose sleep over it. Well, I was going to say, I'm he's sure he's shaking in his like, boots yeah. with the way that, that Adam Cole, it's not like Adam Cole is Brian Danielson or John Moxley in, in this, you know, equation. So I don't know if he's really shaking his boots over it. I think what it is is you're not promised anything tomorrow. So even though the circumstances may have been much different when he put his name on that contract, WWE is still going to be what it is, and it tends to be a volatile company, and it's a reminder to everybody that, yeah, I mean, no one should be crying about Roderick Strong not being able to be released. He's the one who resigned. Maybe he thought it was going to be one way and now it's another, but that's just, that could happen anywhere, but it could definitely happen in WWE. So just another warning for anybody looking to sign. There are people who do get released or want to negotiate, you know, against where they're working with WWE. You just got to remember that. AW Rampage. 464,000 viewers and a point one four tied for the lowest rating the show has ever done in its normal time slot. SmackDown, 1.95 million viewers, 0. 0.38 in 18 to 49, which is the lowest the show has ever done on Fox. Obviously, it was the NFL draft and the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Killed them. And uh, I expect that uh, Raw is going to be killed, and uh, NXT is going to be killed. AW Dynamite is going to be killed. Mm-hmm. And bro, this this uh, <laughs> this rampage, which is starting so hit, hit with the shovel, it's starting it's... at two o'clock on the West Coast, two in the afternoon on the West Coast. The kids going to be starting skipping school for it at noon in Hawaii. <laughs> Right up against Young and the Restless. Oh, my God. It what, will. What a battle. Oh, 5.30. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's actually 2.30 Pacific, <laughs> not 2. Oh, what a thing. That should help. Yeah, so, yeah. anyway, that's going to die. <laughs> but that's uh, that's what happens. Uh, you go up against a uh, a sport. Do you beg for a NBA. replay to be put up anywhere, or does it even matter? I mean, you could, but... Multiple replays across Turner programs, <laughs> Turner channels. I'm actually know. kind of surprised. I mean, I, I think part of it obviously don't. part of it obviously is is you want to you want everyone to watch your main airing live, okay? But I never actually thought about this till ex- this exact instant. 
Okay, so let's say that you've got Rampage or Dynamite. Dynamite airs every Wednesday at 8, okay? So if you guys remember, like back in the day, Nitro would always have an immediate replay. It would go 8 to 10 and then 10 to midnight. they do an immediate replay or whatever. Yeah. So it's kind of like Raw never did that. Raw never allowed replays because they want everybody to watch live when it airs. Well, we got a situation now, I think everyone's well aware, that uh, a lot of people DVR these wrestling shows. Now, of course, some people don't quite get it because it's the old, what crazy person watches these shows live? Me and all my... I don't care about you and all your friends, okay? 80% of people or more are these people that you think are out of their minds because they're watching the show live, all right? So you're talking 20% of people DVR it. 80% watch the show live. So if these 20% are going to DVR it, when you DVR it, you can just fast forward through the commercials. Why wouldn't you just do a second airing later that maybe they would watch you know, live, even though it's taped, and then they'd maybe sit through those commercials? I don't know. I don't know if that would be better, but uh, wrestling is always, aside from that Nitro, they've been very resistant to doing replays of any of their shows because they don't want to split the audience away from the main airing. But given the, the DVR usage nowadays and how easy it is to DVR things, I mean, I'm not sure it would be better or worse to just have a second airing later instead that uh, perhaps more people would watch live and see more of your advertising that way. I don't know. I know there's a strategy with where they play shows, and sometimes they're trying to burn through syndication and things like that, so they'll put things on at 2 and 3 in the morning. Like You wonder why it's there in a block, and it's because they're trying to run it out or something like that, or because it's it's got some sort of weird you know, cult following or something like that in that slot. But they do show a lot of movies and they show a lot of repeats on things like True TV and places like that where it's like, man, maybe every once in a while, especially when it comes to Rampage, it's only an hour long. If they could slip that in somewhere, it would do wonders for its visibility. And you just put in cut-ins during the show that, you know, maybe you update even, you know, and say what's coming up on Dynamite. If you announce something online and you drop that stuff in there for the replay and just try to, you know, make people remember that Rampage is on Fridays and unfortunately it's going to move around a lot. So try to stay in tune with it. We had to do a break. When we come back, it'll be time for that Raw report. Shouldn't take long. Pretty much a nothing happening show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Come if you go to my Twitter right now at Brian Alvarez, stick it up there at the top. I talked about Give Big Day yesterday for Whale Scout. And today only, today only, I have allowed Oreo the Orca access to my Cameo account at 4W oh. Online. Oh. Now it ain't cheap, okay? It's going to be $100 a Cameo. The cameo will be done by Oreo the Orca. And the key is, I don't get a penny of it. Your your entire $100 minus the cameo cut goes directly to Whale Scout. Registered 501c3 nonprofit. Pays for trees, mulch, all that stuff that we normally talk about. And uh, you, in return, not only get to make a charitable donation, but you get a cameo from Oreo the Orca. Wow. Today only. Today only. Tomorrow it'll be back to just boring old me again. But if you want it, I, I recommend you you grab it now because it ain't going to be back for a while. Oreo the Orca cameos, $100, 100%. Not 99 not 95 100% of the proceeds will be donated to Whale Scout. Which means it is 100% tax deductible yes. you could get a yes. cameo oreo and you could actually write that off on your taxes as yeah. well as doing good for everybody which i'd like to see you write off on your taxes cameo by whale may now doing good with that i yeah. hope let's talk about this raw show here i would not say this was a terrible show but given that there's a uh, pay-per-view this weekend it opened up with roman reigns the usos and paul Heyman coming down to the ring and uh, if you guys watch SmackDown, they uh, they added Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre to this tag team match. It was supposed to be the Usos versus RK Bro to unify the tag team title. So basically, they 
for weeks advertised there was going to be a unification match coming up at this pay-per-view. And then a week before the pay-per-view, they added Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre. And I expected this show to open with the announcement that all titles on the line. You bought your tickets for a unification match. We've changed to a six-man, but all titles on the line. You know what happened? Nothing. They got into a brawl. They fought to the back. And the next thing you know, the announcers are just like, well, you know, we'll see what happens on Friday. What a bait and switch this has been so far. A segment with Ezekiel and the Street Profits, Chad Gable, Otis set up a match, which was Kevin Owens, Chad Gable, and Otis versus Street Profits and Ezekiel. And uh, the match is fine. They're all uh, they're all good workers. Uh, Ezekiel made the big hot tag. And then uh, Owens tripped him, and Chad Gable rolled him up and pinned him. Yes. Ezekiel got his three weeks, and now he's doing jobs. We had AJ Styles doing an interview with uh, Kevin Patrick about Edge, and he's having a match tonight, and if he beats Damian Priest, Damian Priest is barred from ringside for this Backlash show. What is everyone talking about? Are you... Did you... You either... Are you adding... Are you? What is that? What are you talking about, bro? I've heard this somewhere before. We had Adam Pierce, Sonya yes. Deville, and they were talking about the six-woman tag, which ended up being the main event of the show. And bro, I was two hours and thirty minutes of the show, and I'm thinking, what is the? Oh yeah, Becky's coming out to stand in the ring for fifteen minutes before the match started because they had so many video packages and commercials. And then, I swear to God, this happened. Veer Mahan comes out, and he's going to have a match with a local guy. Are you listening to me, Mike? He's going to have a yeah. match with a local guy, okay? Now, uh -huh. if you have not listened to the Brian and Vinny show, whoosh, all over your head. But I know most of you do. This freaking guy's name is Bert Hansen. Bert? Bert Hansen. So they interview old Bert. He says, I'm a local guy. I work down the street at Stamey's Barbecue House. And man, I've always wanted to be on Monday Night Raw. And, uh, and then Veer Mahan absolutely killed the guy. Cervical locked him and killed him. It was brutal. It's horrible. Then we had Edge come out. And he did a promo. And he talked about how we are Judgment Day. And, man, he cut a promo on this crowd, the cheapest heat. You guys ain't got no teeth, and uh, you're not very smart, and you're ugly. And they all booed him. Allegedly, there was some crowd sweetening, but I don't know. Mm. That led to AJ and Damian Priest. Well, that was a good match. Went uh, 11 minutes, and uh, Styles ended up rolling him up for the pin. So you know what that means? What's that? Damian Priest cannot be in his corner at the pay-per-view. Mm. Then Edge attacked AJ, of course, immediately and beat him down because, you know, God knows no one can have a celebration. And then as he's beating him down, who should run down to make the save? But uh, Finn Balor ran down to the ring. So it looks like we're going to have a tag match or something at some point here as well. We had uh, Cedric Alexander trying to get back into the Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin have been wrestling as the Hurt Business. Well, Cedric comes out and he goes, we want to be back in the Hurt Business. Because apparently there's the Hurt Business, and there's also the Hurt Business. They're not the same. They're two different things. He wants out of the Hurt Business and into the Hurt Business. <laughs> MVP goes, no, you can't be in the Hurt Business. Either one. You're apparently. stuck in the Hurt Business. <laughs> okay. So that's what happened. <laughs> we had a Miz TV segment with uh, Mustafa Ali, and... Uh, so Ali comes out and, you know, he's trying to, uh, he's trying to. And so then Miz cuts the promo and everything like that. And, uh, and so finally Ali grabs the mic away from him. And uh, they're going back and forth and Miz goes, why don't you go complain to Twitter more? And so they just move on 
because no one's reacting to this. And uh, they get in this big argument and everything. And out comes uh, uh, Theory. He doesn't have a real first or last name. I guess he's got a last name. But Theory comes out. And uh, he says, I've talked to Mr. McMahon, and he is going to give you a uh, number one contenders match tonight. And if you win, you get a shot at my United States title. And, of course, you'll never guess what the match is. Theory and Miz against Ali. And uh, in two minutes and 48 seconds, Ali is pinned. And uh, he will not be getting his championship match. So uh, it was fun while it lasted. They did a segment backstage, which was absolutely like the stupidest thing you've ever seen. Dana, Reggie, Truth, Tamina, and Tazawa are all backstage. And they're all in an argument. And Dana is mad at her husband, Reggie, because he's trying to roll her up for the title because her title's more important than her marriage. And as they're all arguing, uh, Nikki Ash flies in with a high cross out of nowhere. And she pins Dana Brooke. If you didn't watch this, you got to go back and watch it. Because the way that they did it, Dana's on the ground, and she gets covered by Nikki Ash, and the ref goes one, two, three, okay? Dana is unable to kick out, but the moment the three count hits, she's able to sit up and go, ah! She screams at the top of her lungs. It was so stupid. And they all start running after Nikki Ash, and, and she's off on her way. And this leads to, uh, to Dana who I think is supposed to be a baby face, but bro. She goes, Reggie, you need to get me a rematch today or we're, we're done. We're through. So apparently uh, he was able to do it. He gets her a match with uh, Nikki Ash. I swear to God, this match goes a minute 30. There is no interference. There is no distraction. Dana Brooke just hits a neck breaker and pins Nikki Ash in the middle of the ring. In a minute 30. It was like a spot she pinned her. Wins the belt back. And uh, so, yeah, she's the new champion. The new 24-7 champion, everybody. <laughs> and then they go backstage, and Nikki Ash is, she's so disgusted with herself that Dewdrop comes up, and she says, are you sick of all the games? And Nikki Ash says yes. So I, I think Nikki Ash is history. And uh, Karrion Cross is also history. So I believe that Nikki Cross is coming back. But I don't know that for sure. But that's what they uh, suggested here. We had a Seth Rollins promo. So Seth Rollins is the... Uh, he's a top heel. He comes out. And he goes, It's Seth Rollins Appreciation Night. And the crowd starts to cheer. And they start to sing his song. You know, they do that, singing his song. I'm like, what is happening here? Where are these fans that used to hijack the shows? Because this gimmick sucks. And Cody comes out, and they have an argument, and and uh, Seth tells him that his dad was delusional. His dad wasn't good enough to be WWE champion, and as long as he's here, Cody's not good enough either. And they get a big brawl. Cody sends him packing. That's a whole build to their match coming up at the pay-per-view. Lashley killed Cedric. And then this is what happened for the main event. So what they like is they like to bring out a big star and then they go to break because they want you to stick around to see the big star. And so there's a six-woman tag in the main event. And at 10.29 p.m., 10.29 p.m., they hit Becky's music and Becky starts making her entrance down to the ring and they go to commercial. At 10.29 p.m. They then proceed to do four minutes of commercials, a 24-7 recap, a segment with R-Truth and Reggie, a, seg a segment with Dewdrop and Nikki Ash, a commercial, Rhea Ripley, Sonya, and all the other women entering, another commercial, and at 10.44 p.m., the match starts. Okay, so poor Becky Lynch had to come down to the ring and stand there for 15 minutes in the ring like a lump. Half of the time in the dark. Because if you go to a live event, the, the person comes out and then the commercial starts, so the lights just go dark. 
So Becky's just bebopping in the ring. Oh, man. Well, it sure is dark in here. 15 minutes. So then they have the main event. And it was uh, Bianca, Asuka, Liv versus Becky, Rhea, and Sonya. And uh, it's it was a pretty good match. Everyone's everyone's good worker here. And uh, Sonya ended up uh, getting pinned there at the end. So that's kind of her new uh, gimmick is to be a heel who always gets beaten, which is a great gimmick, by the way. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And uh, Liv Morgan got the pin with the Oblivion. And uh, everybody was so happy as the show ended. And they're celebrating. And uh, what this had to do with the pay-per-view... I have no earthly idea. But that was, in fact, the uh, the Raw show there. And that leads us to WrestleMania Backlash coming up on on Sunday, everybody. Hope you're excited. Because I know I am. I know those fans are as well. You know, maybe Roman Reigns got a bigger heel reaction than Edge did. Maybe. No, he got cheered and they chanted his name because he's awesome. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I think that idiot Oreo had his microphone on in the sea during that last segment. I want to apologize for it that. It seemed like. Uh, quickly tonight, Cameron Grimes, Solo Sokoa, Carmelo Hayes for the North American title, NXT Spring Break-In, Braun Breaker, Joe Gacy for the NXT title, Cora Jade, and Nikita Lyons versus Natalian Lasher Legend, Viking Raiders versus Creed Brothers, Grayson Waller versus Nathan Frazier. Fun fact, everybody, more titles are on the line tonight than are on the line for WrestleMania Backlash at this point. Because right now, only one title is on the line at WrestleMania Backlash. I've been told that uh, there's going to be somewhat of an overrun. There's always a nine-minute overrun. But uh, we hear today a 10 to 15 minute overrun. So it may be one minute longer than usual, or perhaps as many as six minutes longer than usual. But you are going to probably get an overrun tonight. So uh, that is that. Uh, as noted, uh, Oreo the Orc is doing cameos on my account today only. $100 all proceeds go to Whale Scout. Check it out at 4W Online on Cameo. And in about an hour, myself and Lance Storm. Will be up for subscribers, video.f4wonline.com live. And then uh, the podcast will go up uh, shortly thereafter at uh, wrestlingobserver.com. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up today. I hear the fans are very excited about it. And, uh, and of course, we'll be back here tomorrow with more. We'll talk spring breaking, preview AEW Dynamite, talk all of the news and more. I want to thank Mike as always, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio, top tiers, Twitch homies. Oreo and his pals, thanks for the help. I'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.